Hi everyone, welcome back. We are on location on the Alpine Tour. This is Valois and the bottom of the Col du Galibier, which starts down there and goes round the back of that hill. Up yonder to, I think it's around 2,700 metres, not far off the, the top height of the Col des Arins, which is 2,770. So it's one of the biggest road passes in Europe. But anyway, let's have a, look, a quick look at the bike stands. We've got a Time Alpe d'Huez 2022 disc brake version. We've got my TTR in proper fat boy downhill spec with the 180s on, which I have to say have been really good out here. And then Peak Canyon, this is kind of Peak Canyon value and performance era and ultimate CF SL with mechanical rim brake Ultegra. That weighs about 7.2. Back when that was new, it was a bloody good deal. Difficult to get those deals anymore. And it's actually got a set of fast sports cage rim brake wheels on it. Personally, wouldn't be my choice for, for big downhills, but this guy's 60, 60 kilos, so no problem. These are my brakes, <laughs> and they still cook. Anyway, I want to show you this, because it's a bit of a mythical reputation behind time bikes, isn't there? Quite hard to find them in the wild, quite hard to find them in shops. It's actually quite far, hard to find someone who's going to sell you one. Anyway, this is a 2022 model, and it's got the tuned mass damper in the fork, the time active technology which is supposed to damp vibrations between 25 and 50 hertz just to stop some buzz coming up to the handlebars from like chip seal and rough roads and stuff. Now speaking to my mate Pete who rides this, is it noticeable? Well, it's hard to tell. Um, I think you'd really need a quite a trick accelerometer set up on the handlebar to really deduce if it's, if it's doing anything. And I think on the 2023 models, they may have actually discontinued that because I don't think people are really appreciating the extra technology and it's a bit of extra complexity especially in manufacturing adds a bit of weight unfortunately on this trip i don't have a torx security screw looks like a t20 or t15 security screw to undo that little cover and have a peek inside so i can't really say much more at the moment but we'll see if we can do that down the line it's got a lot of visible um two by two twill weave on the show in the layup looks really nice same again on the seat post. At the top of the seat post, it's a kind of a forged carbon affair to keep the weight down. I don't think it's wrapped aluminium. I think it's actually forged carbon, which is quite cool. And that's spec with a Celestalia SLR on there to keep the weight down again. 12-speed um, Dura-Ace, not the power meter version, because we all know they're crap. But this has got Favero Asio Mashimanos on it. Pretty, pretty bomb-proof. Um, obviously, 12-speed's got an 1134 cassette on the back. This kind of cable routing of the the di2 cable i don't really like that because it has to really go outside the chain stay on this side and then if you drop the bike it could easily bite through the cable um, and you wouldn't really want to route it up that side of the seat stay because it may snag the chain and then you have to sort of pin it up here with a zip tie so not a massive fan of that i think they could improve that maybe get the the cable port at the back here like it is on my bike just to neaten that up so just to prevent that getting snagged if you drop the bike by accident you know simple things like that um this has also got fast sports wheels on it, so there's three of us riding fast sports on this trip, putting our lives in the hands of seven kilos of plastic, doing these massive descents, Col de Galibier, Col de Zara, but absolutely bomb-proof fast sports wheels. We've all got DC240s on and the same Sapin CX race boat. Not sponsored by fast sports, just wanted a really reliable wheel set for this trip, all of us, and this is what we we plumped with. These two guys actually bought these these wheels off the back of my recommendations, really, but yeah. Um, let's have a little bit more of a look at this. So we've got no integration, which is really cool because the new one, the 2023 model, has got integrated cables going through uh, the head tube, and I think the head tube is slightly wider, so there's a top bearing with a, an extra kind of port in the top bearing ring so the cables can run down the head tube. But obviously, Pete travels with this bike a lot, and it's just nice to be able to just quickly take the bars off and fold them next to the, the frame. Even though we are driving on this trip, it's, uh, it's a nice option to have, and it's just not worth having those two brake cables integrated when the new Dura Ace is, or the new Shimano Di2 is, is wireless shifters. Let's quick look at the tyre clearance. Now that's one thing I think does let this bike down, it's a Max 28. This is a 26 mil Pirelli, um, which I did laugh at, because he's not on Conti. But it's all right through the seat stays, it's more of a chain stay affair. Um, this is measuring about 27, 28, and as you can see, there's not a lot of scope for any bigger tyre. You could probably put a Conti 28 in there, maybe even a Conti 30 if you didn't flex it, but it would have to be perfectly um, dished 
be able to fit that in. It's not too bad, but you're not going to fit a 30 or 32 in there on a wide room. These um, Revo fast sports wheels are 21 mil internal, so by modern standards, they're not actually that wide anymore because we're getting 23, 25s now. Um, a little look at the seat post clamp again, forged carbon back plate. Probably quite a kind type of clamp for a carbon seat post, so not an integrated wedge that's just gonna. I find they bite seat posts and you have to put quite a lot of torque on them or, or pay so they don't slip, so that's quite a nice little design. And then the best type of saddle cradle is uh, the ones with the infinite adjustments on the two bolts. Can't go wrong with that. I don't know why anyone does anything different. It's not patented, so I don't know why everyone doesn't do that. So it's the best type of saddle clamp. It doesn't rock, it doesn't slip forwards or back, and yeah, it's just the best. Now obviously this is built from frame up uh, only, so we've got MV handlebar and stem. Quite wide bars actually, I think. It's probably a 40. Ooh, much wider than mine. Uh, 40 I think in spec, but across the hoods they're 38. And yeah, uh, 160, looks like an XT rotor on there. Seat's only 65 something kilo, so not really an issue. And then it's actually got a 140 on the back, which was howling today. So I'll probably recommend he goes up a size on the back. And yeah, just a really nice bike. Unfortunately, I don't have the scales with me, but I'll drop down somewhere below once I've asked Pete how much it weighs. And yeah, that is the Alpine bike display. Cheers.